Hey guys, James with Torches and Tactical. Today, I'm going to walk you guys through the Phoenix E35R. Now, this is an updated version. They've had quite a few in the past, but we're going to go over the latest and greatest. Now, this is a 3100 lumen light from our friends over at Phoenix. It is powered by a 21700 cell battery and gives a maximum throw of 260 meters or 15,103 candela. It is also impact resistant to one meter, IP68 water resistance to two meters, and comes in at less than five inches, 4.72 to be exact, with a 1.04 inch head and a 0.98 inch body. Now that's not bad considering you have that 21700 cell with the 3100 lumens. This whole thing only weighs in at 148 grams, and that's including that battery. So, Let's start by seeing everything that comes in while I tell you a little more about all the specifications. So this is the box that the E35 came in. You can see here, now I will bring it up here so you can see a little bit easier, but you do have 3100 lumens, comes in at 2 hours 30 minutes or 260 meters, drops down to 1000 lumens for high, 350 lumens for medium, 150 for low, and 34 eco. Now that eco is going to work for 69 hours and still shine out to 25 meters. So all in, you get quite a bit of use out of your E35. They also include the E35R manual. Now this gives you a very quick diagram on how to use each of the modes. But if you open it up, It breaks it down quite a bit more so you can see exactly what you're getting, how to operate everything, and it does come in with a multitude of languages. So we'll get this out of the way. They do also have a little promotion or a little brochure if you want to call it that. CL26R, BC21R, HM70R to let you know what else they do offer. So also get that out of the way. And they have a warranty card in here for you too. If you fill this out, turn it back into them, this does come with five years of free repair and a lifetime warranty if anything does fail. You also get your USB-A to USB-C charging cord. Now, again, I have thousands of these, it feels like, so I'm not gonna worry about opening this one up. But inside this little bag, you do also get a pretty generic lanyard and a replacement O-ring in case the one on it ever breaks. So. Now let's focus on the light. I mean, this does look really, really good. Um, the light I'm gonna compare it to is a Through Night, and I'm telling you now, Through Night and Phoenix could be brothers in some regards. So we will go ahead and jump on everything. Let's start at the business end, shall we? Now this does has a, have an SST70 LED, and that SST70 LED sits behind a very, very concave. Uh, I don't know if it translates on the camera, but it does sit in a very concave TIR optic, and that's going to help with your beam pattern. Oh, let's turn this on. That beam pattern is going to give you a pretty defined hotspot uh, with soft edges, but it also does spill out, and the spill is quite a bit softer. But with that off, you can see this very, very nice accent ring here. Uh, it does come in a copper color. That copper does carry over to this really, really nice e-switch as well. And I, I really like the fact that they broke up just the plain uh, satin, if you will, anodizing with that those accent colors. Uh, that switch does have a battery indicator built in. So when you do start it up, you can see exactly what your battery level is at. I mean, in, in a range, of course. But moving down, that switch does sit just a little bit proud, um, and it makes it easy to identify. Now on the back is a very nice textured USB-C charging cover port, and that makes it so you're able to see, or feel rather, what is the charging port and what is the switch. So even with your eyes closed, you'll always be able to find that switch and activate your E35R. Continuing to move down, uh, there, there's real no shoulder, so to speak, but the head does step down. Uh, there's no cooling fins or anything like that, but the battery tube does have very, very narrow machining as well as almost like a, a it reminds me kind of like a blood groove on a knife, 
so there's six of those that do follow along. And again, you'll see exactly why I'm comparing this to the through night that I'm going to, but we can keep moving down. And one thing that's a little bit peculiar is this tail cap, while it does have a magnet in it, and the magnet works pretty well, while it does have a magnet in it, it looks like it unscrews. But I don't know if it is a single piece or if mine is glued in place, but this one's not coming off. Yep, I'm really reefing on it right now, but it's not coming off. Uh, it does separate at the, the shoulder, if you will, right above the battery tube. So if you need to get that battery out, that's where it's going to make contact right there. But that magnet works really well. And I thought it was going to be a little on the soft side, considering it is a 21700 light, but it holds really, really strong. Let me get that knife back out so you guys can see. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and shake the snot out of this or anything like that. But given the weight of the light, uh, it does hold and will direct as long as, you know, whatever you're mounting it to isn't moving too terribly much. Now, one thing that I do find a little bit confusing about this is the fact that you do have these saddles cut into this tail cap. And now there are obvious lanyard holes here if you decide to use the lanyard on it. But I find it confusing that there is no tail switch, but it does have saddles as if you do have a tail switch. Uh, I'd have preferred to see this kind of just smoothed off. That way it's not kind of visually misleading. Finally, we do have a very... Uh, actually, this is one of the softer ones I've seen. Uh, I don't feel like it's going to... I don't feel like it's going to wear out prematurely or anything like that, but this pocket clip does have a... It, it, it's made of a thinner steel um, and does give you quite a bit of resistance while still maintaining a lot of flexibility. Now, you do see this, this hole in here, and that's going to help it uh, be a little bit thinner on the body of the pocket clip and come out a little bit. So I think that's what a lot of that is. But before we flip over to the user interface, let's go ahead and move over to this charging port one more time. Now, I will show you guys up close. This is one of the cooler or uh, more visually appealing charging port covers I've seen. It does have a very, very satisfying uh, noise, if you will, or like a suction noise when you pull it apart. And I don't know if you heard that or if it came through on camera. Here, let me pull it up to the mic. Now, there was quite a bit of a, a suction noise, and you feel a lot of resistance. So I don't feel like this is going to wear out anytime soon. But getting that charging port open, I do have a USB-C cord over here that I keep plugged in all the time. We throw that in place. You can see that that does show red here on that battery indicator to let you know it is charging. And it charges up pretty quick. So let's keep moving along. And if you want to know what it is charging, we'll go ahead and take this apart right now. And you do have a 5,000 milliamp hour 21700 cell battery operating at 3.6 volts. It is a total of 18 watt hours. Now this does have, you can, you can see this little lip here on the top. This does have a protection circuit built in, so you don't have to worry at all about any mishaps or anything like that happening because Phoenix does built in their battery protection to the cell itself. Now we can zoom in here. You can see a very, very stiff um, getting a finger in there. It is a rather it is a rather stiff spring for that negative terminal as you have a very flat post. But these, these side terminals here do help with reverse polarity protection. And if you look, you can see that the threads are also anodized. And the only contact being made here at the very top of the ring. So when you do have the battery in place, all you need to do is give it a quick turn, and that's going to disable the battery. Um, if you don't want to use their included lockout, you can just go ahead and opt for a quick quarter turn and that's going to disengage the cell completely. But now moving on, we will go ahead and go over the interface right now. And one thing I'm not particularly a fan of is the fact that this does have a double click to unlock. Um, I have done slower clicks and you'll get a double blink over and over. So in order to unlock it, you do have to make sure that you click that twice pretty quick. There you go, that turned on. And now, as far as the user interface goes, I do think this could use a little bit of work because right now it is just 
one press to keep going through the different modes. All right, so here we have the 30 lumen eco mode. Again, this will run for 69 hours. Press it one time, it'll go to 150. This 150 lumen mode will operate for 21 hours and 20 minutes. Press again to go to medium. This is 350 lumens and it'll run for nine hours and 20 minutes. Then you have high. This is 1000 lumens and this will operate for three hours and 40 minutes. And finally, if you press it again, this does give you that 3100 lumens and quite a bit of heat if I do say so myself, but 3100 lumens and it'll operate for two hours and 30 minutes. Now, unfortunately, while you're in low or any of the other modes, there is no double click to turbo. That is one thing that I think could have been used here. But if you do need a strobe, you can sit here and press the button for 1.2 seconds. It'll shut off temporarily and then go into a strobe. So it's a little bit of a convoluted approach to get to strobe. Uh, I wish it had a double click to turbo, but ultimately the user interface isn't bad. Uh, it's just a little let's just say different than others. So it will take a little bit of getting used to. But one thing to note is that the quality of the actual light is here in spades. So getting used to another user interface, you know, I don't, I don't mind it so much if it means that you're getting a very, very good quality light. And Phoenix has that, that well-known lifetime warranty. So if you do have any issues with the actual light itself, that is shy of, you know, you running over the light itself or uh, when it comes down to it, um, you know, unless you just end up busting it in half, Phoenix is going to have you covered. They're going to make sure that on their end, they're going to make sure that you have a light that will give you years and years and years of fantastic service. So now I told you I was going to compare the E35R to another light, and that is the Thrunite T3. Now, if I set these next to each other and you stare at them side by side, you'd swear that these are cut from the same cloth. Now, yes, I know there are differences in the switch. I know there are differences pretty much overall, but you have the narrow machining as well as the grooves cut into the entire battery tube. This one does have some cooling fins on the head, but it does have a slightly raised head switch. And I mean, there are quite a few similarities in the design, but they are far enough apart to where, you know, we don't have any well tool workos copyright issues. Now the through night T3 is rated at 2250 or 2250 lumens. So yes, it's not going to give you the same output and it is a much cooler light. It is a much cooler light than the Phoenix E35R. But let's go ahead and get outside. We'll compare these. And then I'll tell you the ins and outs of what I thought of the E35R. So let's get out there and look at these beam shots. All right, guys, we have the Phoenix E35R. Now I'm gonna go ahead and double tap to turn this on. Here we have Eco, Low, Medium, High, and Turbo. Now, turbo is all 3100 lumens from the E35R. And to compare, we also have the Thrunite T3. Now, if you press and hold, it will go into moonlight. And I barely see it with my own eye, so I doubt you guys are going to see too much on camera. But we'll shut that off. And if I press the button once, this is the lowest mode. And this is set up on a smooth ramp. So I'll go ahead and press down and let it increase. Now this is 2,250 lumens from the Thrunite T3. Again, to compare, we have the Phoenix E35R, 3,100 lumens, and the Thrunite T3. 2,250 lumens. All right, now let's get back inside. All right, guys, we looked at the E35R with its evil twin. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, with a very similar looking light, the Thrunite T3. And 
The 2250 lumens coming from the T3, it is quite a bit cooler of an output uh, with a much more defined hotspot. So if you like a little bit of throw, the through night T3 might be for you. However, I like a little bit more neutral of a light and I do like a soft spot, a soft hotspot. And the Phoenix E35R definitely hits more on the head than the through night T3. But I want to know down below in the comments what you guys thought about the E35R versus the through night T3. And Tell me if you liked the beam pattern from one over the other or vice versa. Uh, also, tell me what you thought about the actual tint. Uh, I, I'd like to know personally if you guys like a more neutral color versus a cooler white light. Now, I know the cooler white lights can give you quite a bit more visual output. Does have a nice warm or at least warmer neutral tint, and that tends to hit a lot of positive marks for me. So finally, I do want to sit here and say for just a second that there are a couple of drawbacks for the E35R. Uh, I told you that it did have kind of a convoluted user interface, and I think that that's something that could be solved in a future iteration of this light. Again, it's not a deal breaker, but something to keep in mind that it is a, it is a single press to change the outputs versus a press and hold or anything like that. Um, it's not anything you can't get used to, but I know for some people that prefer um, more intelligent user interface like Anduril or something like that, where they can fully customize those outputs, uh, this may not be for them. Another one is I wish that there were a rear tail switch. I mean, it, it really does. It looks like it has a rear tail switch, but it's just a magnet. And the magnet works really well, but it I just can't go over, get over the fact that it looks like it has a rear tail switch, but it doesn't. Uh, they even make specific mention of that on their product page on the Phoenix Light website. And finally, the only other thing I would change back to that user interface is I wish you could disable the double click auto lock. I, I don't want to have to sit here and double press every time. And even that, I pressed it twice, but it wasn't fast enough. So there we go. Two presses, it did unlock it. And with a couple of those software revisions, this would definitely find its way into my EDC arsenal. And I, I, I like the output, I like the beam, I like the fact that it does flood. I think it just needs a couple small tweaks to that user interface to be a 100% fantastic light. So thank you guys so much for being here with me while we go over the Phoenix E35R. And I'd appreciate if you guys could like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And when you subscribe, be sure to hit that little bell notification too. That way you get notified when we do get new videos out, because that's the way that we're able to continue to get all of these reviews and do all the giveaways we do. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next one.